Hey, what's up? I wanted to show you guys my PlayStation 2 soft mod setup and why it's important to update your OPL and your WLaunch Elf in the file formats and how I have a XFAT card that I run with my MX4SIO and a FAT32 card now and I can just use the standard Windows default formatting and that works just fine before you get used have to use a third-party program and there's a couple things uh, some of the games are larger than four gigabytes so if you wanted to do drag and drop with the MX4 SIO you might have to cut them into multiple files and you don't have to do that anymore. So if you're running an old soft mod on your PS2, you might want to update it. Uh, because the new OPL will allow you to do a few cool things. I'm going to show you technically what it looks like. There are stu still a few things you might need to remember. Uh, like this, for example. This is my Sega Ages set. I'm going to put this in and show you how you might want to set this up. Oh, also... The new WLaunch Elf and OPL will support EXFAT on USB. So USB is not the best way to play your games because it's only USB 1.1 on the PlayStation 2. But if you have the FireWire support, FireWire is much faster. It's 400 megabytes per second on PS2. And that also has... Um, support as well in OPL I believe and it definitely has it in WLaunch Elf now. You just have to have the correct fork and I'll boot that up and show you what I mean. So I'm gonna boot up the ISR. This is the standard ISR that I use to move PS1 saves for my Tony X International. I normally just start this off now this is kind of weird when you start this because normally the card in slot 2 is card in slot 2 is actually MC1 but it's actually not uh, and as you can see this fork of WLaunch Elf it, see how it says ISR in the upper right the way this works is I go down to mass and I, when I go into mass and then I hit triangle to back out, see how it changes to MX4SIO? It's like a magic trick. And um, if I had USBs in there as well, we're going to populate the USBs. So I can, I'm going to show you physically what I mean by that. Now the way I keep this set up, I have one of these set up for PS1. One I keep empty for when I'm flashing, updating software. But the reason I'm plugging this in is to show you the way the WLAN shelf works. Now, if I go into MC1, that's always going to be blank. If we go into the MX4SIO version. But watch when we go down to mass. Now that I have the USBs populated in slot 1 and slot 2, I'm going to go into it and then back out. Now look what it says. Mass, mass 1, and MX4SIO. So it's a little like it's a little magic trick. You got to go in there and then back out for you so you can see all three devices now. Normally, I think by default it just shows the MX4 SIO at when you first click the mass and then once you back out it gives you access to mass and mass 1. So, despite the fact that it says mass, it's actually giving you access to the MX4 SIO. Now back to the Sega Ages, and when I go into CD here, see how this says ISO? Now these did not come like this. These were bin queues. And I hit and a lot of PlayStation 2 games actually are not DVDs. They're CDs. And if you're in W if you're in OPL, I can show you as well. But I had to transfer all of these, convert them, not transfer them, convert them to ISO format. And that is what OPL looks for, is .ISOs. 
So the S Sega Ages, for example, there's 30 different games, and I had to convert all of these to ISO format. So if you're ripping your games to .bin queues, that's where it's two separate files. One is a bin, one is a queue. Or you obtain the game some other way, that's a .bin queue. You're going to need to convert it to .iso for OPL to be able to read it correctly for you to be able to play the game. And if you're looking at a, looking physically at the game, it has a silver bottom. Uh, a game like Bust a Move 1 has a silver bottom. Normal PS2 games have black bottoms and they are DVDs. And some actually are DVD 9s, and those are games that are larger than 4.4 gigabytes. But also, there's an issue where this is an issue in the past where if you had a game that was larger than 4 gigabytes and you had it on a FAT32 card, FAT32 doesn't see files larger than 4 gigabytes. Well, now WLaunch Elf both supports EXFAT and FAT32. So you're going to want to use EXFAT so you can read the games that are larger, the ISOs that are larger than 4 gigabytes. And there's, some, there's going to be two. There's going to be games that are 4.4 .4 gigabytes normally. Uh, between 4 to 4.4, .4, and then there's going to be ones that are double-sided discs, which are large games like... Now I'm going to back out and go into the DVD folder now that I switch the SD card. And games like... Uh, let's see if I can find some. Here's two. God of War. These are double-layered DVDs, and they're it doesn't really matter what format they are. The point is, is that they're larger than four gigabytes. The other eight, seven, you know, eight, eight thousand megabytes. These are only going to be. You're only going to be able to drag and drop these on EXFAT, and that's what Windows, by default, wants to format cards that are larger than thirty-two gigabytes. And that's all standard USB drives that you buy nowadays are all going to be that size. So you don't really need to use third-party software anymore you can drag and drop it and run it on the MX4 SIO and this is not any special version of OPL that I run this on this is not the Grim Doomer build this is the original fork of OPL so I do run a special fork of WLaunch Elf that supports EXFAT for USB Firewire and MX4 SIO, I do not run a special version of OPL. And that's because check it check out my shortcuts here. When I hit select button, these are all my shortcuts I've set up and my W launch elf. This is a magic gate. This is what I use when I transfer PS1 saves for Tony Hex International. This is the MX4 SIO. This gets you out to the dashboard. This is HDD Manager. This is if I want to take games off of the SSD that powers games off. This is Memory Card Annihilator. This is HDL Dump. This is if I want to transfer games to the SSD, the internal SSD. This is HDD Tester. This is if I want to touch, test the hard drive in case there's issues with it. Maybe it's running slow. What I found on the PlayStation 2 is you want to leave 20% of the hard drive empty. As long as you do that, I have not run into any problems. But my point is, is we're going to start OPL, and I'm going to show you what I mean. See, I have a theme. And the theme is something that the other fork, the Grim Doomer fork of OPL doesn't support, as far as I know. So real quick, this is kind of important. I accidentally left this USB drive in. Um... I'm restarting OPL. It causes a problem sometimes when you have the MX4 SIO in and USB. I think it uses the bus in some way. So I'm going to restart OPL up. The controller was freezing. 
But if you ever run into any problems, you have anything in the USB, take it out. I was actually running my uh, video adapter off of the USB, and I found that I was having less issues when I started running it off of the TV. But you can see, okay, see we have a theme. And I can actually go to, see this is Adventures of Darwin when I hit info. See how it says it's only 250 megabytes in the upper left over there? That's because this is a CD game. This is a silver bottom game. And uh, that's a dot .iso. Uh, I have this on the hard drive. So it says, see how it says HDL there? But if we go over to the SD card here, this is to the left, see how it says SD? When I go, when I hit left button, it says SD. But real quick, I wanted to go through, I'm going back to the SD, SSD here. I want to show you, see how I have artwork, that's no big deal. But my MX4 SIO SD card also has artwork. And that is kind of a big deal, because as far as I know... The only way to get artwork on there is to download it uh, from a hard drive. That's the only way I was able to get it to work. And I had all these games. This was off of a second hard drive that I had. And that was the only way I was able to get this artwork to work. Was to transfer it using WLaunch Elf. I saved it on the USB drive using WLaunch Elf. And then I combined it and I put both of... The artwork files, see how it says SD up there, I put, even though we're on SD, and you can see, when I hit, when I hit square, it shows the game preview in the bottom left. Um, the artwork actually isn't on this SD card. It's actually on the internal hard drive. Real quick, I want to show you guys all of the uh, soft mod programs I have. I have a pretty complete list. Basically, everything I can possibly find on the internet, I've loaded onto this card. Sorry for my dog. She's uh, she's over there making noises. Okay, I'm gonna load W Launch Elf up and show you what I mean about all my uh, programs. I must have close to a hundred uh, Elf files here. Like we said, we go into mass, even though we're going to MC1, to go into the MX4 SIO, you go to mass, and I put everything into apps folder, and you can see as well, my W Launch shelf has a, a background, this is where I keep all my skins normally, but I've transferred a lot of those. Um... But I have a cheat device, I have a free McBoot maker, HDL dump, HDL installer, HDL helper that runs off the PC, memory card annihilator, these are memory card backups, Grim Doomer's build of OPL, OPL manager, this is all stuff you know that I can use, a lot of the stuff I can use on the uh, PC as well. Um, some of the versions of W, these are some of the versions of W on shelf, see. This is the FireWire, because I don't have FireWire, I keep this in a separate folder. But if you have FireWire support, these are the different W Launch Elf ISRs that you might run. I keep those just in case I get a, my hands on a PS2 that has that. These are some that I renamed. That way when I hit select button, I can I know what I'm actually activating. Uh, and this is my emulator package. And these are all emulators of different uh, consoles and I want to show you real quick a project I'm working on it's pretty interesting um, if I can I want to make a video on it if I get it working uh, I have Mechapone here this is allows you to play PS1 games CDs on the PlayStation 2 uh, that are burnt but I have a PlayStation 2 memory card here this is the largest card that you can get is a 128 without a dip switch you can buy some that are larger with a dip switch, but this is as large as it gets without a dip switch. I don't like dip switches. I've seen them crash and 
destroy cards, so I just like this the way it is. But we're going to pull this out, and I'm going to show you what I keep on here. Basically, I back up all my uh, memory card saves on here, but also I'm trying to turn this into a self-contained emulator card. Okay, now remember what I was saying about MC1? Not... Now, if we go to MC1 normally to access that card, see how it says nothing's here. See, I backed out, going back in it, nothing, nothing showing up. That is because we don't have the right version of W Launch Elf uh, booted. And that's what this is for. This magic gate, I have two, ver that's why I have two versions of W Launch Elf here. This one p displays. MX4SIO files. This one displays memory card and slot 2 for PS1 and PS2. So we're going to start this and I'll show you what I use that 128 megabyte card for. So now that I started this W launch elf up and we go to MC1, now it's populated. See? And I keep free PSX boot stuff in here, Game Shark files, memory card annihilator, and these are memory card images, entire images that I keep backed up on here. But I'm currently working on a project where I have an entire self contained Super Nintendo. And uh, the video output's not working, but I have a Super Nintendo emulator with some ROMs. So I'm trying to see if I can run a Super Nintendo exclusively off the memory card only. I just thought that'd be a cool idea, you know what I mean? Um, anyway, that is my soft mod and just some hurdles that I ran into running some pro of my software. And that's it guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.